Hey guys, Sam here, welcoming you back to the Bradford City Road to Glory Career Mode Season 2. Smash a like down below. Usually I don't do like goals, but I've noticed that you guys have been hitting 35, 40 likes on the videos, uh, especially the Season 1 finale. So if we could go ahead for the Season 2 intro video, the entrance to Season 2, can we get 50 likes? We've never gotten 50 likes on a video. Well, we have, but they're really high viewed videos. You know, on the Bradford City career mode, we haven't got 50 likes. Can we do it on this episode? Make sure you smash the hell out the like button. But let's get into some transfers. Obviously, if you watched the season one finale, you would know we didn't get very many uh, uh, funds. We didn't get much money. So, this season I was looking at selling some players, Felipe Marai being one of them, and Aaron McLean coming back from loan, also being one of them. And we got offers for both of them, which is very good. McLean, still at least 200000 I was happy to take that. Uh, but we needed to raise some funds if we were going to sign a, a, a bit of players. And I wanted to get at least three players in. But I knew with the amount of money that we had, we weren't going to be able to sign a qual quality player. So, going into the transfer window, I had a thought where I thought I'd buy a couple players and load a couple players um, in order to sustain the amount of positions that I was selling players. Because as you could see, I'm selling the likes of Yates, um, Mirai, and Aaron McLean. And if I was going to bring in one quality player, it wouldn't be good. You know, it, for me personally, if I'm selling three players, I want to bring in three players to fill those holes because I don't want to be ending. I don't want to end up with one reserve or two reserves, and then a couple of injuries means we have to start forfeiting. So there are a couple of players, as you can see on the screen, you've been looking that we were looking at. Jed Steer being one of them. Of course, Pickford left, and Ben Williams became our starting goalkeeper. He's not that bad of a goalkeeper, so if I wasn't able to bring in a, someone like Jed Steer, then I was happy to keep Ben Williams as a starting goalkeeper because I did play him a few times. I think I played him one or two times uh, last season, and he actually performed quite well. So, you know, he's not the worst goalkeeper, so I was happy to play him, um, but I was looking at upgrades as well. Chuba Akpom was the main striker we were looking at, of course. We weren't able to sign Zoko, you know, um, he was a bit too expensive, so I decided to look at someone like a Chuba Akpom, who was at 240k value, we offered 350, uh, very cheap, he's quick, he's not the best finisher of the ball, but his physical stats more than make up for it, and him and Gallagher up front were a, a partnership that I was looking at, because the one thing Zoko brought was a bit of pace into the front line, he was able to take on a, a, a player, he was able to take on a defence, open up a defence, um, and then create space for someone like a Gallagher or someone running in like an Isgrove um, to, to create space and that's really what I was looking at at Chuba Akpom and Arsenal accepted 350,000 uh, offer which I was happy to take uh, and he would be a crucial first team player for us at only 5k wages but you know it was very disappointing not getting enough money and you, without that money, you really don't have the power to sign someone like a John Taylor, who one of my favorite, favorite um, younger players in the um, Skybet leagues. One of my favorite ones, and he's a right midfielder, very pacey. I would have loved to got him. Unfortunately, I'm going to spoil it. We don't. You know, those future fee loan offers very rarely come off, and they weren't interested in on him coming on a loan. So, yeah, there were a couple players we weren't able to strong arm into getting because we just didn't have the money, and I didn't want to overpay for anyone. That's that's why I thought Chuba Akpom was a great signing. If you saw what the chief uh, executive said, he said between 600 and 800,000, we got him for 350. So I thought, you know, we were making good deals so far, um, and the more money we could conserve, the better. And as you can see, Aston Villa were not having it. Um, they wanted, you know, the, the the nearly a million for Jed Steer. So I decided to try and get him on loan. You know, he's not a starting goalkeeper at Aston Villa or anything like that, um, and hopefully they'd be interested on um, giving a loan. Um, which I'd be happy with, because to be honest, as a championship team, I think loans are something that you have to look at. I think, you know, I didn't want to rely too much on free agents, but eventually I had to look at them. But yeah, loans are the other things that I think uh, are quite underrated, because loans can help you for that one season at least, until you build up more funds. But as I was saying, I didn't want to rely too much on free agents, but I ended up doing so anyway. Um, and Lucho, Lucho Emmanuel Cardoza was the first one I looked at, but as you can see, he wants 9,000 wages, which is astronomical for a, a championship side, for a League One side. Um, so we were trying to see, you know, if we could negotiate with him. But the thing with free agents I noticed is when they offer a wage or when they say a certain wage, they really want that wage. So 
Um, it was it's very difficult to get them cheaper because you're not really paying for them anyway. Um, so when they say, yeah, I want 9,000, you can't negotiate with them, which I wish you could uh, because they don't even have clubs. So really, you should be the one that's telling them, yeah, this is how much we want to pay you. And then they should be like, okay, well, you know what? I don't, I'm not playing for a club, so I may as well take this offer. You know what I'm saying? Um, but nevertheless, we signed our first player, Akpom. That was a strong ramble about free agents. Uh, it's just how I feel, you know. I think free agents shouldn't have the amount of power that they have in FIFA. I think if a team comes in and it's a decent team, I mean, we're a championship side. I think someone like a Cardoza should be joining us. But as you can see, we only have one reserve, which is very, very bad. You want to have at least five or six reserves because you never know when you're going to get a suspension and an injury at the same time or something along those lines. So for me right now, it was about getting a couple lone players in. Um, because, as you can see, we have a pretty weak side. We need to strengthen a little bit, and it's in various areas of the field. So, I didn't want to necessarily sign one more quality player, which I could have done um, with the money we had left. I didn't want to sign one more quality player. I would have preferred to fill up those reserves um, with players rather than have one reserve or two reserves. So, the first person I was looking at was Lloyd Isgrove. This guy was an absolute monster for us last season when he came back from his injury. I decided to get him on loan, full season loan, from Southampton. He's a sporadic first-team player, so instantly I thought they're going to have to accept it. And the other person... I was looking at was Jack Grealish from uh, Aston Villa, 19 years old, left midfielder, again a sporadic first team player, 19 years of age. And then I also wanted a utility player, someone who could play on the wing, someone who could play down the middle, um, could do it all, defend and attack, and I, so I decided to get Tom Lawrence, he can play left mid, central forward, uh, centre mid, right mid, you know, he can really he, he can really play anywhere along the field, he could even play striker if you wanted him to. Um, so I decided to try and get him on loan, Jack Grealish ends up accepting, well Aston Aston Villa end up accepting the loan, and we go to get uh, Jack Grealish um, signed up to the club for 6000 a week wages, which was, I think, quite reasonable. Um, we put all our transfers into wages, um, which is, I think, was the best move, because we had about 300000 left, put them all in wages, allows me to do, get two or three loan signings in, um, and bolster the, the club's amount of players on the reserves, because that's what it was for me here. We end up accepting the offer for Tom Lawrence, and this is something that I, I kind of thought maybe I shouldn't have done, because how much was it for um, Tom Lawrence? 4,000 week per wages, and it ended up coming down to either Isgrove or Cardoza, when if I didn't get Lawrence, I probably could have got both both Isgrove and Cardoza. As you can see, we had 13k wages. Let's say I didn't sign Tom Lawrence on a loan deal, I'd have about 17k wages which would be enough for 6,000 for East Grove, 9,000 for Cardoza, but we couldn't do that, so we had to look at a different centre-back. So we looked at Jan Hyung Soo from South Korea, and the one thing I've noticed with FIFA and South Korean centre-backs is physically they're quite good. Um, you know, they pretty much have above 70s across the board in their physical stats. Um, and he was only wanting 3,000 per week wages, and I thought, well, along with Isgrove, it's going to work. So we decided to pick up a 6,000k Isgrove and a 3,000k Jan Hyung Soo, which I was quite happy about. And if you thought it was the end of the episode, no, I'm also going to give you guys a game because I'm so generous. And I also wanted you guys to, to judge the team in the first episode and see how they were playing. So that's how we set up 4-4-2, just our traditional 4-4-2, Isgrove back on that right wing. I love that guy so much. The new combination of Akpom and Gallagher with the absence of Francois Zoko, Jan Hyung Soo playing in a centre back along with Davies and Darby our new captain and Jack Grealish on the left hand side. Um, I want to make it clear that Jack Grealish will be starting ahead of Tom Lawrence because of pace reasons um, but yeah Tom Lawrence for me is more of a utility player and he's just there to sort of fill a spot. And that is a bit harsh, but to be honest, you know, it's not bad getting subbed in maybe 60th, 70th minute consistently. Uh, it's not the worst thing. But nevertheless, we have a cup game against Sheffield Wednesday, and that's the reason I decided to get this game out of the way in today's episode, because I wanted to kind of start the second episode with League. Um, so I decided, why the hell not play this cup game as well against Sheffield Wednesday? We're at home. Uh, let's test out the team. Let's, you know, add a game, play, you know, mainly with Karimo. Do you see the first episode of a season just transfers? But I'm going to give you games. And I'm going to give you quality goals because Billy Knott is in the mood to just score a ripper of a goal. He scores a 
fucking beauty. I mean, he's done this before, right? But this was probably my favorite long shot from Not because he just he takes one touch, sets it up, and that ball is dead in the air, dead, and it just goes into. Oh, look at where it enters. I mean, that is just just below the crossbar. I mean, I could watch that for days. The keeper's trying, but come on, mate, you're not gonna you're not gonna save that as much as you want to. And Billy Knorr, driving at the defense, look at this for a central midfielder. He's our ball-winning central midfielder, driving at the defense. Akpom there, a bit too soft of a shot, doesn't get it past the keeper, but we go into the half, 1-0 up. And for me, Billy Knott played incredibly well that first half. Of course, you know, I mainly show the goal scoring highlights or, you know, nearly nearly scoring or something like that. But Billy Knott controlling the midfield along with Harrison Reed, driving at the defense and really pushing the entire team forward. And we were playing really good attacking football. Gallagher here lays it off to Stephen Darby, our new captain. He was our vice captain last season. He's taken the armband off of Davies. And here, uh, the Sheffield Wednesday defense gets absolutely bamboozled. They get stripped from Gallagher. And that was such a Gallagher style goal with his strength um, and his finishing that pretty much sums up what Gallagher is going to do for us this season in one clip right there in the 80th minute or oh, around there anyway, um, he scores a fantastic goal, just muscling off the defense and just blasting it past the keeper. And that for me just sums up the strengths of Sam Gallagher. Uh, here at the end, Davies makes, uh, not Davies, sorry, Ben Williams makes a terrible pass, but Jan Hyong Su with a brilliant last ditch tackle saves us and keeps us a clean sheet as well. Uh, which is fantastic. And we pick up a 2-0 win against Sheffield Wednesday in the first game of the season in the Cup. Uh, and I was very happy about that. Sheffield Wednesday, not a team you should take lightly. And not and Gallagher are the two who take on the uh, take the goal, sorry. And Gallagher gets a man of the match vote, an MVP vote. And yes, that is back for this season. Uh, it's not going to be any different. It's going to be one vote from EA, one vote from me. And at the end, we're going to combine and see who our MVP was. And Gallagher gets EA's first vote. Shout out to Billy Knott with an 8.1 rating. Played an incredible game. Um, 7.5 rating for uh, Ben Williams. Starts off his Bradford City campaign with a clean sheet. But can he do it in the league? We're going to find out next episode when we play Wolves, Wolverhampton. Um, it's going to be a great game. We're away and Wolves are a decent side. So if you're excited for that, make sure you leave a like. Again, we're trying to hit 50 likes. If you could do that for me, that would be amazing. And at the end of every episode, even though there's only one vote, I'm going to let you guys know who is at the top of the MVP leaderboard. Who do you think is going to join him in the next episode? There's three votes up for grabs. Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you guys are keen. If you're new around here, if this is the first video you're checking out, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it real. Oh. Oh, <laughs>